This is a DR650. I could tell you what year it is, but it doesn't really matter. It's not special or unique. It's identical to the thousands of other DRs to roll off the factory floor. For 30 years, Suzuki has been ignoring the comments section and popping up the same machine year after year after year. Regardless of making almost no improvements in 30 years, the DR650 still has a devout and loyal fan base that continue to buy brand new, unchanged DR650s. That being said, if you do any research at all, you will quickly realize that the DR community has some complaints. Starting with the seat. It's too hard. The suspension is too soft, and the tank is too small. The muffler is too big, and the headlight is too dim, and the brake light is too big. The bike is too tall, the bars are too low, the tires have murderous intentions, and apparently the carburetor and intake should have come from the factory with a drill and a box of drill bits. The front fenders are too fat and floppy, the hand guards, the hand grips, the foot pegs, the mirrors, and the speedo to name a few. So it kind of makes you wonder, why would anyone buy this bike? If you're like me, then you probably owned a couple other bikes before you went down the slippery slope that is dual sports. I had friends with KTM 640s and 690s, and they are awesome bikes. But sadly out of my price range, and maybe a little out of my wheelhouse for skill level. Before I chose the DR, I had a checklist in my head. I wanted to buy the newest, lowest kilometer bike I could afford. It had to be reliable and able to cruise on the highway without revving to the moon. I had already crossed Canada on a 440, and I don't intend on doing that again. It has to be sub 400 pounds and more than capable off-road. And a big one here, it has to be simple and cheap to fix because I'm probably going to break something. So with this list in my head, I ended up looking at three different big single 650s. The KLR, the XR, and the DR. For me, the weight of the KLR put it out of the running, so it was really between the DR and the XR. I knew the XR was the more off-road capable one, but living where I live, I also know that I have to ride a couple hours on the highway to get to any of those awesome off-road areas. All my research pointed to the DR as the better highway bike. With its external oil cooler, it's not going to run nearly as hot as the XR on the highway. So once I decided on the DR, I went to YouTube to see what people had to say. I realized pretty quickly that the entire nation of Australia has very strong opinions. So after watching every video made about the DR650 and learning why every super original DR owner calls their bike the bush pig, it is safe to say I had some pretty strong preconceived notions on what the bike would look like in stock form. Slow, soft, uncomfortable, and slippery. And in reality, well my initial impression was what bikes are these people comparing it to? Because it doesn't feel slow to me. I'm not saying it's fast at all. I know how unimpressive the horsepower numbers are, but honestly in no way does it feel slow. It'll put a smile on your face off the line and cruise at 120 kilometers all day with no complaints even with my wife on the back. Although with that seat, she might have some complaints. I think as far as comfort aspects are concerned, Suzuki built the tank to match the seat. You're not going to be able to ride this bike for much more than an hour and a half without having to stop either way. As for the size of the bike, it's a little cramped for me, but that being said, I'm over 6 feet tall and that's a personal preference thing. And yeah, what everyone says about the trail wings is right, they are absolutely terrible tires. These tires though, like, seriously, they're... If anything is going to hurt me, it's going to be those. Um, 
That was a really exciting trail. But yeah, I don't know. They just give like the illusion of traction. It's kind of okay, and then very suddenly you're just sliding. Either back wheel, flipping around, or yeah, I mean, it's not scary in the front wheel. The suspension. Yes, it is soft. The rear is actually a little softer than I was expecting. The rear sagged so much when I put my loaded up saddlebags on it that I suddenly wished I had a shorter kickstand because it looked like it was going to fall over all the time. I will say though, living in a town that has more bad roads than good roads, the supple squishy suspension is kind of nice when potholes are unavoidable. I feel like for a lot of people, the DR is a gateway bike into the dual sport world. I have noticed a common thread with people who have owned DRs. They seem to keep them for a while and either realize they have zero interest in going off road or they sell it to buy a KTM. More often the latter. But you do get the odd person who will keep them forever and they'll ride around the globe five times. I've only owned this bike for a couple thousand kilometers now, but I love riding it, even in its completely stock form. Sure my butt hurts and it's saggy and it's slippery off-road, but those are easy cheap things to address and I have already started collecting aftermarket parts to change. Yeah, it's no Dakar racer as the boys in orange will always gladly point out, but then neither am I. It's the most approachable, unintimidating full-size bike I've ever ridden. My shortfalls as a new off-road rider far outweigh the shortfalls in this bike. I don't know if it's going to be a forever bike for me, but I do know that if I ever sell it, it won't be an easy decision. Oh, I need new tires. <laughs> oh, I was in neutral. 